antenna signal not to reach us. Even if everything is working fine, you cannot do anything with that satellite, even if the error in the orientation of the satellite is just two degrees away. And then we also were going to throw for the first time a activity where the satellite was going to be taken out of the Earth's gravitational field and getting into the gravitational field of another celestial object. So there were a lot of new things that were happening. But like always, the challenge brings out the best in capable people. So the more bigger the challenge you pose to them, the better they perform. So that's how in the case of Mars mission also, while our initial target was only six months of operation after insertion, on this September 24th, we have already completed two years and we are likely to complete many more years. We have one other hurdle in the January next year. We have to do one maneuver to avoid what is called a long eclipse duration from limiting the battery, battery drain out because you can visualize that the battery which is on the satellite is the one which will be providing the power to the satellite when solar eclipse is there for the satellite. The duration will be so long that the battery will drain out. So to avoid that, we are going to maneuver and change the orbit such that the eclipse duration reduces and this is targeted sometime in January of next year. Once that is done, we still have a large amount of fuel left in the satellite for it to work for many, many years. And we have already released the first drop, first year of data to the uh, researchers and the public. And ISSDC, our International Space Science Data Center at uh, Bangalore, Bailalu, is actually making this data available to the global community. And also you will be happy to know that this satellite has taken more full globe images of Mars than all the other satellites put together up to now. Of course, this was again an innovation in the sense we converted our limitation of doing a highly elliptical orbit of 300 kilometer by 70,000 kilometer orbit into such an opportunity because the, when the satellite is at 70,000 kilometer, it can take the full globe of a Mars image. Whereas most of them are around 300 to 500 kilometer circular orbit, so they cannot get at a time the full Mars coverage. So like this, and you also saw, for example, National Geographic has put on its cover page the image taken from this Mars color camera. Now the point, what I, and then we also did last year a satellite called AstroSat, and this AstroSat also is very unique because we enabled Indian academic institutions like Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, and also Raman Institute, PRL, and many others, they built the actual instrument that is flown on this satellite. And today, that satellite is performing extremely well. And it is one of the very unique satellites globally because the kind of capability it has got in terms of sensitivity for ultraviolet Im imaging and also for large area proportional X-ray counter and X-ray and also High, under high energy particle <coughs> telescope, soft X-ray and hard X-ray telescopes. These are all instruments built in the academic institution. And we, by this process, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to improve the capability in the country for making use of space, looking at space, doing space science and research. Today, this satellite is also available for any researcher. They can target, they can seek time they can tell I want to make observation of such and such a star or such and such a black hole or whatever object you want to look at in space and then conduct such research that is possible. This is the first time that students and researchers in astronomy field will be able to do such an activity. Similarly, we are coming up with Aditya, another satellite which is going to provide an opportunity for scientists to look at sun Again, you are familiar, you would have read in the papers, whenever total solar eclipse occurs, scientists go to that particular place and for the few minutes of time they get of observing the total, so total solar eclipse, they plan their activities, conduct experiments and seek information. Whereas this Aditya, what it is going to do is, it is going to provide a 24 by 7 ability to look at sun and using a solar coronagraph, it can look at sun's 
from 1.2 radii up to 3 radii, what all mechanisms are occurring, coronal mass ejection or magnetic fluxes, and so many other events which are there, how they can be studied in a continuous basis. So this satellite is getting ready. We are also working on Chandrayaan 2 where we will have a lander and rover which will this time the lander is going to go on a controlled descent and unlike in Chandrayaan 1 where we had a moon impact probe which crash landed onto the moon surface but still the place where it landed has been named as Jawahar Stan and that is the by name by which that particular location is being called internationally and it's an accepted name there. Now Chandrayaan 2, we will have a controlled descent. We are working on technologies for demonstrating these throttleable engines <coughs> and you will descend on the surface of moon at very low speeds so that both the rover and the lander are impact and through the rover you will do some in-situ observation. So similarly, we have currently plans for improving our ability to make use of the space technology for a large number of applications. Just to give you a couple of small indications of how the country is making use of the space technology today. For a long time, while ISRO was working on all the space technology and trying to convince the user departments that there is plenty you can do with this earth observation data and communication and navigation data, it is always a tough business. Probably if you go to somebody and tell him that whatever work you are doing today, you can do better by a new method. First reaction of that person would be, who are you to tell me? I know my job better. <laughs> That's the first reaction. So you can imagine the remote sensing as a technology itself is very new in the from 70s onwards. And if we go and try to tell the various whether government or other departments that you can make use of this information better, you were meeting very little success, but you have to be perseverant over two to three decades of effort had resulted maybe in 15 to 16 departments working with us. For example, forest department started doing biennial forest survey, then water resources department started using meteorology department, and then urban development, like that some of the departments started using. But today, the governments across the country, various states and centers have realized that governance requires large amount of information and also transparency can be brought in if you can make use of monitoring from space which does not know the state boundaries or the national boundaries. You can cover any region you want, you can pick up information and you can also provide communication. One of the key things which happened just in the recent past is MN, MGN Rega or Manrega what is called Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Under this government spends tens of thousands of crores of rupees every year conducting specific activities in villages. Now certain resources and assets are built up. But these, without proper monitoring, you can easily imagine that same thing can be told, I have done it year after year and then I can claim money. And I can also show whatever is not done also because our country is so vast and it's not possible for the governance to reach out to every place. But now the Department of Space along with the Ministry of Rural Development and NIC, now we have put in place a mechanism where the local person is able to actually through a mobile app pick, take a picture and provide some attribute information about that event and it comes into the geospatial database of Bowen. And two days back it has been made public and more than six and a half lakh assets which have been created by this MGN Rega has come into the database and within a very short time of another six months more than three crores such asset is going to get into the database and which the government will be also able to actually not only government six lakh is also made accessible to public now public can also know if somebody claims in my village some pond has been made whether it is really there or not I can cross check so such things are happening and use of space technology and geopositioning information because today's mobile when you take a picture the location of that picture time at which you have taken can be made incorruptible so because of that you can get authenticity to that particular data which you are collecting 
So similarly, Post and Telegraph, we were able to make the complete database of the Post and Telegraph. More than one and a half lakh post offices are there in the country. And each post office, though you had the pin code number, exact boundary, what the area that if each post office serves is still in information, which was always in question mark. But all that is getting resolved. Now we have already done the database for this. And postmen are also going to be utilized for providing additional information. Like I was talking to you about the crop forecasting thing. You can imagine each of the one and a half lakh post offices, one postman works with a farmer and provides information about that farm. What crop is sown, how much fertilizer is put, how much watering is done. All that information gets to the database. The kind of accuracy that can come is tremendous. Not only that, it will also help in the economics, both for the farmer as well as for that region, crop insurance and host of activities. So like this, many activities are going on. And we are also trying to make use of the academic institutions and academic com community. We have a program called Space-Based Information System for Decentralized Planning. In this, the entire countries, all the more than six and a half lakh villages, the entire assets of each village, a village can have a maximum of 288 different assets, if you take. Not that each village will have all that. Some villages may have 10, some villages may have more. But first thing is to establish each village, whatever asset it has got, comes into the database. Then the village serpents themselves can start planning what is required, even under NG and Rega, or other both state and central departments uh, plans, various uh, mechanisms, they can get funding. All this information can be made accessible to the villagers. For this, we are tying up with academic institutions. For example, one of the academic institutions in Chennai has adopted 100 villages. So they are going to do for each of those villages, using the student community, mobile application, crowdsourcing, and these techniques, creating the database, and also using these tools, telling the village serpent and the elected representative how they can plan for their village, in which place they should have a water body, how the water body can be replenished by the various sources. So like this, there is a host of activity which can be done and where the student community can not only learn about the geospatial technology and tools, but also can contribute to the nation's development and growth. Similarly, Ministry of Health, we did what is called the heritage sites. You must be aware that each of our cities and towns, we have a very ancient or a internationally recognized heritage site. Again, the government archaeology department did not have the exact boundaries. Though they had said within 100 meters you should not construct anything, within 500 meters you can do under some kind of a permission, the exact boundaries of those are not delineated. So all that has happened, is for 4,000 locations it has happened, and now we are trying to do through student projects, 3D city models of each of these heritage sites so that it becomes a permanent record. A group of four to five students from civil engineering to computer engineering and software, they can form a team, actually go through that area, create images and create a virtual city, 3D city model and it can become a database. This is another work which is going on. Here also there is plenty of opportunity. Apart from that, I can go on and on. There are plenty of opportunity because navigation and communication signals which are available. Today, like I told you about the rickshaw person, there is a tremendous opportunity to convert this capability of locating yourself and the mobile system which is available in the hands of the people, the kind of information you can reach to them, kind of services you can reach to them. <coughs> tremendous opportunity is there for students and making use of newer capabilities. One of the things could be, see we have these signals available 24 by 7. Can I receive the signal, measure its strength, polarization, and intensity, and based on that, retrieve the atmospheric information, then we can add to improving our weather forecasting. Like this, plenty of things are there. If I keep on talking, maybe I can talk for hours. So I'll stop at this point. A few more things I just wanted to tell. Today, we have more than 39 satellites, navigation satellite, communication satellite, Earth observation satellite, which gives the country a tremendous capability. And globally also it is recognized that ISRO India 
is the, one of the leading countries in putting space technology to practical use. And all this has happened because we had people like Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, a great son of the soil here, who had the vision to look at how a new technology which becomes accessible can be used for practically bringing improvements in the quality of life. Initially, if you look at education, dissemination of information, communication, then in terms of uh, weather forecasting, earth observation, bore well drilling, fishermen. So like this, you have a, there is no field in which the space technology is not touching the lives of people today. So all this was possible because there was, there was this visionary who could look at how a new technology can be used. Same thing is accessible to each one of us. Even as we are seeing living in the world today, there are new things coming, new disruptive technologies are coming, different things are happening. What is needed for us is how to make use of these newer capabilities and newer technologies to solve the problems our country is facing and how we can make our fellow citizens' life better, how we can improve the standard of life in our country and how we can also make sure that our country progresses and becomes a number one country in the world. If today, for example, for many years, decades, if places like America or Europe, people seek to go there, live there, why? Because people of that country spend their sweat and blood or put their sweat and blood and realize their system, ecosystem, where people feel comfortable, ease of living is there, and their talents get recognized, they are able to make great progress. It is that environment which has pulled them towards that. If same thing were to happen in India, can it happen by somebody else coming here and doing it? Will somebody come and do charity for us? Can you imagine such a thing? No, it is not possible. The only way it can happen is people like you and me, we have to decide, we have to improve our country's condition, we have to solve our problem, we have to address the difficulties we face. And each one of us is sitting here you have had a tremendous opportunity. Not everyone of your age in this country gets such an opportunity to learn things, to understand things, to make your own life better. Should we make use of this knowledge and capability only for our individual benefits or because in our country,